Hi everyone, a very good evening and welcome to today's live session. You all know that today the topic that we are going to be discussing is uh, ratios, proportion, allegations and mixtures from quantitative ability. So for the first few minutes, let us skim through the basics of ratios and proportions that you need to know to solve questions from this topic and then we will go about solving questions. Okay, so let me share my screen and as and when you have any doubts with regard to my explanation or with regard to the question, please feel free to ask then only I will be able to help you better. Okay, so let me share my screen. So uh, first let us discuss about ratios. Okay, see uh, basically what are ratios used for? Ratios are used for comparison of quantities. Okay, in terms of generally in terms of division. Let us say you have two quantities or two numbers AX and BX, right? How do you represent these two numbers in terms of the ratio? You say it is nothing but AX by BX or this is equal to A by B, right? So these two numbers are expressed in the ratio A is to B. That is a general uh, definition of a ratio. Basically, ratios are used for comparing two quantities. Let us uh, expand this further with the help of an example. If you have two numbers, 4 and 8, what is the ratio between these two numbers? It is nothing but 4 by 8. And then what you do? You take out all the common factors from these numbers and write them. Okay? You can write it like this also or you can further write it as, see this is 1 by 2. Correct? Now 4 will go in both this. This is 4 into 1, this is 4 into 2. So you take out the common values, divide that and so you will be left with 1 by 2. So that is how you represent ratios in general. Now what is proportion? See proportion is nothing but equality of ratios. Okay, Equality of ratios is called proportion. Now let us say uh, you have two ratios. Okay, Let us say you have two ratios. One is A by B and another ratio C by D. Now if these two ratios are equal then we say that these numbers right A, B, C, D are in proportion. Okay, so what is proportion? Equality of ratios is called as proportion and if A by B is equal to C by D, then you can say that these numbers A, B, C, D are in proportion. Okay, now uh, or you can say A is to B, the ratio between A is to B is the same as the ratio between C is to D. This is how you represent proportion. Okay, this is the proportionality symbol. Now, when you look at proportion okay now these are two ratios here which are in proportion so whenever you have two ratios which are in proportion okay one uh, basic thing that you should know is that the product of the extremes is equal to product of means okay product of extremes is equal to product of means see why am i teaching you these properties see these are few properties of ratios and proportions that you should know now these properties will become useful in a few problems so that's why you should keep all of these in mind so i can say product of extremes is equal to product of means so here b and c are the values in the means and a and d are the values in the extremes or i can say if these are the ratios okay a is to b is as c is to d then i can say that a into d is equal to b into c that is what it means okay see it is nothing but cross multiplying a into d is equal to b into c similarly here if you do a into d that is equal to b into c so product of extremes is equal to product of means so this is one very important property of about proportion that you should know now i'll t i'll ask you a few terms okay now uh, see these are this is the very basic thing of ratio and proportion then see uh, now coming to proportion do you know what is fourth proportional do any of you know what is fourth proportional? See, these are few definitions which are, are good to know, okay? Because, see, you never know what uh, question will come in the exam, correct? So, some of these definitions, if you see in the exam, you should know what it means. Actually, it's a very easy thing. Uh, if you know the meaning of it, it becomes very easy. Let us look at what is fourth proportional. So, this is one such term which you should know. What fourth proportional means, okay? Now, um, see, if you have two ratios right which are in proportion let's say a is to b this as c is to x correct then i say that this x is the fourth proportional of this a b c okay so if i have two ratios in this form a is in proportion a is to b is as c is to x then x is called as the fourth proportional of a b c and x is equal to b into c by a okay Yes, or here if it is D, in general we learn it as D here, no, A is to B is to C is to D. So this D is called as the fourth proportional of A, B, C or I can say D is equal to B into C by A. Similarly, now next, next term. Now tell me what this means. What is mean proportional? What is mean proportional? See, okay, I'll give you, uh, I'll further explain it. See, if you have two ratios like this, right, A is to X is as X is to B. Okay, then X is the 
second proportional or it's also called as the mean proportional so what is it yeah root of ab correct so i can say x squared is equal to ab or x is equal to root of ab so this is the mean proportional of the numbers a and b okay now if i say a is to x is as x is to b then i can say that x squared is equal to ab or x is equal to root of ab okay so that is about uh, main things that you should know about proportions now uh, coming back to ratios again there are a few terms in ratios which you should know now what is a duplicate ratio in, uh, can any of you say what is a duplicate ratio again see these are definitions as i said very easy they are okay if you don't know good now we will learn now it's very easy nothing uh, big about it see ratio of squares of two numbers is called as duplicate ratio of the two numbers let's say you have uh, a ratio 3 by 4 okay now what is the duplicate ratio of 3 by 4 that is nothing but 3 squared by 4 squared that is 9 by 16 or i can say that 9 by 16 is the duplicate ratio of 3 by 4 similarly next term that you should know is what is a triplicate ratio okay again triplicate ratio means the uh, ratio of cubes of two numbers is called as the triplicate ratio of the two numbers let's say you have uh, 3 by 4 okay see let's say you have a ratio 3 by 4 then what is the triplicate ratio of this uh, ratio 3 by 4 it is nothing but 3 cube by 4 cube that is 27 by 64 okay or i can say that 27 by 64 is the triplicate ratio of 3 by 4 similarly one more term that you need to know is what is a sub duplicate ratio okay so what is a sub duplicate ratio see let us say you have a ratio 9 by 16 okay now the sub duplicate ratio of these two num these this ratio 9 by 16 is nothing but 3 by 4 basically the square root okay of the given ratio that gives you the sub triplicate ratio so uh, square roots uh, ratio of the square root of the given numbers will give you the sub duplicate ratio okay so keep these things in mind because in question suddenly they ask you like what is the fourth proportional of the given numbers or what is the mean proportional what is the duplicate ratio so if you know these uh, definitions solving such questions become very easy okay now uh, next what we will look at is again there are a few properties in ratios that you should know that is uh, do you know what is componento rule what is dividendo componento dividendo right we will just uh, skim through that as well so if you know please give me please tell me what is componento how do you uh, see if you have two ratios let's say a by b is equal to c by d right you can say that a plus b by b that is equal to c plus d by d so this property is called as componendo right now similarly if you have same uh, two ratios a by b is equal to c by d then i can say that a minus b by b is equal to c minus d by d so this is called as the property now next you have uh, componento and dividendo that means if you have two ratios a by b is equal to c by d then you can say a plus b by a minus b is equal to c plus d by c minus d right so this property is called as componento dividendo okay i hope uh, you know these because again these questions will be i mean these properties will be useful in questions now uh, one more proper important property that you need to know is this see if you have ratios right let's say a by b is equal to c by d is equal to e by f and so on that is some value that is equal to k then i can say that this a by b is equal to c by d is equal to e by f etc that is equal to k this is nothing but equal to a plus c plus e plus etc divided by b plus d plus f basically you are adding the numerators adding the denominators the answer that you get this ratio that you get will still be the same okay so just keep these properties in mind uh, it might come in handy for uh, some que simplification questions or uh, questions on ratio proportions okay now if you look at ratio proportions um, let's say see uh, di you see there are 
it is a very very uh, basic topic from quantitative ability so uh, directly questions can come from this section or application of ratios you can see it throughout in all the other topics like let's say profit and loss or um, percentages right even in percentages when you see we try to represent uh, percentages in terms of fractions so that's also a type of ratio correct similarly uh, when you are using questions or when you are doing questions on ages you make use of ratios there ratio between ages is given so ratio is a topic or partnership for that matter in partnership also you use ratios so ratio is a topic which you have to be thorough with because its application will be spread uh, throughout all the other topics in quantitative ability also okay now before going into allegations and mixtures first let us discuss the questions that we have uh, taken for today's session on uh, ratios and proportion then we will go on to questions on uh, we'll discuss the basics of allegations and mixtures and then we will go on to uh, questions from that okay now the first question for today is there on your screen so read the question uh, try to get the answer and let me know if you're able to get the answer and then i'll go about solving the question if a is to b is equal to 2 is to 3 b is to c is equal to 4 is to 5 and c is to d is equal to 6 is to 7 then the value of a is to b is to c is to d is dash so how do you solve this see whenever uh, you are asked to combine ratios okay now see they have given you the value of a is to b they have given you the value of b is to c now i cannot directly write a is to b is e to c is equal to so much with the given information see whenever you combine ratios what you have to see is that let's say say i have a is to b is equal to 2 is to 3 i have b is to c is equal to 4 is to 5 now which is the common uh, term you have to find out what is a is to b is to c means what you have to check is look at the common term in both the ratios so the common term here is b and look at the value of the common term here it is 3 and here it is 4 see only if the value of the common term in both the ratios is the same you can combine two ratios and write so here what should we do we should try to make the value of b the same in both the ratios now how can i do that see if i multiply this top ratio by 4 and this bottom ratio by 3 what do i get here i will get 12 here also i will get 12 then the value of b becomes the same and i can combine both the ratios so what do i do so if i am multiplying the numerator and the denominator of this ratio by 4 what do i get i get 8 is to 12 similarly i am multiplying the numerator and the denominator of this ratio by 3 i get 12 is to 15 now i have a is to b is 8 is to 12 b is to c is 12 is to 15 or i can say a is to b is to c is equal to 8 is to 12 is to 15 okay now see i know what is a is to b is to c now i have c is to d is 6 is to 7 correct again what is the common uh, term in both the ratios here if i have to combine it is c but is the value of c same in both the ratios no it's not so i have to make them same so what do i do you can take an lcm right lcm of the two numbers 15 and 6 so the lcm of 15 and 6 is going to be 30 very easy right because 15 into 2 is 30 6 into 5 is 30 so what do i do i can make this uh, term c common by making it as 30 so to make this 30 what do i do i multiply this whole ratio by uh, 2 and and this next ratio i multiplied by 5 so what do i get here i get this is equal to 16 is to 24 is to 30 and this is equal to 30 is to 35 now these two ratios are i mean the value of c is same in both the ratios so what can i say so i can say that a is to b is to c is to d is nothing but 16 is to 24 is to 30 is to 35 so the answer that we are looking for is option b that is 16 is to 24 is to 30 is to 35 okay next question a certain amount of money is divided among a b and c if a receives 25 percentage more than b and b receives 25 percentage less than c then a is to b is to c is dash so this is a question on ratios wherein you are using the concept of percentages okay so try to solve this and give me the answer see the best way to solve such questions is to assume some value okay and then uh, solve always and 100 is a very easy value to take so take 100 as the base value and then uh, try to find out the other values and then find the ratio that will be the easiest way to solve such questions 
see here in this question now again uh, the before solving the question the next thing that we'll have to think is which is the value that you have to take as a common value or I said 100 right because 100 is very easy to calculate among the given values which one should I take as 100 see look at the question what have they given if A receives 25 percentage more than B and B receives 25 percentage less than C so they have given uh, the relation of B with respect to A and B with respect to C so let us assume that B is receiving 100 rupees so assume B is receiving 100 rupees and then see how much A will receive how much C will receive and then find the ratio so now try this and tell me the answer assume that B is the one who is receiving 100 rupees and then find how much A receives how much C receives and take the ratio so here what is happening I am assuming that B is receiving 100 rupees now what is given A receives 25 percentage more than B okay now so how much will A receive A is receiving 25 percentage more than B so what is 25 percentage of 100 25 percentage of 100 is 25 correct so A is receiving 25 percentage more than B means A will receive 100 plus 25 or 125 rupees correct now B receives uh, 25 percentage less than C so what does that mean see let, let if I am assuming that C is getting C rupees okay if C is getting C rupees then I can say that B right B receives 25 percentage less than C or B is receiving 75 percentage of what C is getting correct see it is given B receives 25 percentage less than C that means that B receives only 75 percentage of what C is receiving or how can I write this see 75 by 100 of C that is equal to 100 correct that is what B has received so um, what does this mean see this is again this you can write it as 3 by 4 this can be written as 3 by 4 correct because 75 by 100 is in terms of it's a, a percentage I am writing it in terms of ratios so what is C C is equal to 400 divided by that is the value that C gets C is receiving 400 by 3 okay now uh, if you now look at you have got what A gets what B gets and what C gets so what is A is to B is to C that is nothing but 125 is to 100 is to 400 divided by 3 now when all these 25 will go this is 5 fives are uh, sorry for 25 into 5 is 125 so here you have 4 correct 25 into 4 is 100 here you have 16 okay now this 3 is there in the denominator take that up so what do you get you get 15 is to 12 is to 16 correct 15 is to 12 is to 16 that's your correct answer option C is the correct one okay now let's look at the next question uh, look at this next question on your screen policeman starts to chase a thief and moves eight steps when the thief takes 10 steps but 7 steps of the thief is equal to 5 steps of the policeman the ratio of the speeds of the policeman and the thief is dash how do we solve this see what is given 7 steps of the thief is equal to 5 steps of the policeman correct so what does that mean uh, let us say in some particular time the thief is covering 7 steps or that much distance in the same time the policeman would have covered five steps see if I assume that in uh, the policeman okay he is covering 100 meters in five steps right if I say that the policeman covers 100 meters in five steps then that means that the thief also covers the thief covers this 100 meters in seven steps okay that's what uh, they have given okay if the policeman covers 100 meters in five steps the same 100 meters to cover the thief will take seven steps okay or what can I say here in one step how much distance will the policeman cover or I can say that in one step right the policeman will cover 100 divided by 5 meters correct similarly in one step how much will the thief cover in one step the thief will cover 100 by 7 meters now here what are they saying they are saying that the uh, policeman uh, they start the, uh, the police starts to chase the thief and uh, the police moves eight steps and the thief takes 10 steps so in eight steps what will be the uh, distance that is covered by the policeman that is in eight steps right the distance covered by the policeman is what it is nothing but 100 divided by 5 into 8 
correct now in eight steps what is the distance covered by the thief i mean in in the same time right the thief what is he doing the thief is 100 by 7 into 10 steps correct see in the same time okay the thief is covering 10 steps so the distance covered by the thief will be 100 by 7 into 10 now what they, what are they asking us they are asking us the ratio between the speed of the policeman is to the speed of the thief okay see i hope it is clear what i wrote here see the policeman i assumed that he covers 100 meters in 5 steps so using this what i can say is that if the policeman covers 100 meters in 5 steps the same 100 meter will be covered by the thief in 7 steps or i can say that one step of the policeman is equal to covering 100, 5, 100 by 5 meters or one step of the thief is equal to covering 100 by 7 meters now in the question they have given that the police is chasing the thief and the police in a, in a given time okay the time is the same that you have to keep in mind in a given time the police is moving 8 steps and the thief is moving 10 steps okay so if the police is moving 8 step the distance that he covers is this similarly the thief is moving 10 steps means the distance that he covers is this so you have to find the ratio between the speed of the police is to the speed of the thief see what is speed speed nothing but distance divided by time see in this case this time the time that the policeman takes to cover this distance is same as the time that the thief takes to cover this distance correct so what I, what can i say about the speed the speed is nothing but 100 by 5 into 8 this is the distance that the policeman covers divided by the time he has traveled correct similarly this divided by 100 by 7 into 10 divided by t since the time taken is same you actually didn't consider it even but if you are considering also it will get cancelled then just solve for this you get the answer so you have 8 by 5 divided by 10 by 7 yes when you solve this you get it as 28 is to 25 correct yes 8 by 5 into yeah you will get 28 is to 25 so the correct answer for this question is option d 28 is to 25 let us look at the next question next question is there on your screen again a very basic type of question that uh, comes from uh, ratios and proportion a boy has a few coins of denominations 50 paise 25 paise and 10 paise in the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 3 if the total amount of coins is uh, rupees 6.50 then the number of 50 paise coins is dash so this is a fairly easy question uh, what i suggest is try to take everything in terms of paise right so that the calculation becomes easier either you convert everything in terms of rupees or everything in terms of paise so here what are they saying you have 50 paise coins 25 paise coins and 10 paise coins they are in the ratio 1 is to 2 is to 3 so i'm just assuming 1x 2x 3x totally so many coins are there okay now uh, and this total amount accounts to 6 rupee 50 paise so what can i say see if i have x 50 paise coins what will the total value of this x 50 paise coins it is nothing but x into 50 similarly 2x into 25 plus 10 into 3x right these are all paise right see 10 paise coins i have 3x coins so what is the total value of the 10 paise coins that i have it is nothing but 10 into 3x similarly i have 25 paise coins i have 2 2x such coins so what is the uh, total uh, value of the 25 paise coins it is nothing but 25 into 2x similarly 55 paise, 50 paise coins i have 1x coins so what is the total uh, value 50 into 1x now this is equal to 6 rupee 50 paise see remember here we have taken everything in terms of paise so convert this into paise this is equal to 650 6 rupee 50 paise is nothing but 650 paise so what is this this is nothing but 50x plus 50x plus uh, 30x that is equal to 650 correct or 130x is equal to 650 or x is equal to 650 by 130 that is 5 correct 0 0 gets cancelled 13 into 5 is 65 so x is equal to 5 so how many 50 paise coins do we have we have 1x 50 paise coins so that is equal to 5 50 paise coins the correct answer is option a so if it was 25 paise coins you do 2x that is you will have 10 25 paise coins if they are asking for 30 paise coins you do 3x that is 3 into 5 or 15 30 paise coins will be there okay hope it is clear a fairly easy question only thing try to take everything in terms of uh, paise or coins which i mean paise or rupee whichever you prefer and then solve next question 
the ratio of incomes of two persons is 5 is to 3 and that of their expenditure is 9 is to 5. If they save rupees 2000 and rupees 1500 respectively, their expenditures are dash. Try this question now. The ratio of income of two persons is 5 is to 3 and their expenditure is 9 is to 5. They save 2000 and 1500. See, one very important uh, thing that you need to know here is that what is income? See, your income is equal to your expenditure plus your savings, right? Both this put together is your income, okay? Or uh, let us say your income minus your expenditure is what you save, correct? Your income minus your expenditure is what you are saving. So if you know this, then solving the question is very easy. So what is given here? The ratio of incomes of two persons is 5 is to 3. So I am just assuming, let us assume that the income, right, of the two people, let that be 5x and 3x. Now what is given? The ratio of their expenditure is 9 is to 5. So what can I say? Their expenditure, I can take it as 9y and 5y. Okay, and it is given that they are saying 2000, they are saving 2000 uh, rupees and 1500 rupees respectively. So, this is person A, I am just assuming this is person B. So, how much does this person save? See, he is saving nothing but his income minus his expenditure, correct? That is going to be his saving, or I can say that 5x minus 9y that is equal to 2000. Similarly, 3x that is what is the saving of b his income minus his expenditure so 3x minus 5y that is equal to 1500 see it is given he is saying 1500 rupees so all these two equations you have uh, two equations two unknowns solve them get the value of x and y okay now actually you don't need y see the question is what is their expenditure okay they are ask you don't need to find x and y you just need to find y you can find y, find the value of 9y and 5y. That will be your answer because they are asking for the expenditure of the two people. We took expenditure as 9y and 5y. So how do you solve these two equations? See, multiply this equation by 3 and multiply this equation by 5. So this x will get cancelled, correct? So what will you get here? Here you will get uh, 9 threes are, this will become 27y, correct? Minus 27y that is equal to, here you have 6000. Now here similarly if you do you will get uh, minus 25y okay that is equal to uh, here it will be see this will be 15x 15x that will get cancelled right when you subtract the two equations. So this will become 7500. Now if you subtract these two equations what is it that you get as answer this x terms will get cancelled. So remaining you will have minus 2y correct minus 2y that is equal to uh, 6000 minus 7500 that is minus 15. 0, 0 or I can say y is equal to 750. So if y is equal to 750, what are the values that we are looking at? We are looking at 9y and 5y. What is 9y? 9 into 750. 5y is 5 into 750. So you know 5 into 7, 75 into 5 is 375. Correct? That is 3750. There is only one option that has that and 9 into 5 has to be 6750. Okay? Yeah. So the correct answer here is option A, that is 6750 and 3750. So here what did I do? I just We just know that the uh, income minus the expenditure is equal to the savings. So the income, we are taking it as 5x and 3x, expenditure we are taking it as 9y and 5y. The Both the people saving is given. So we uh, took 5x minus 9y is 2000, 3x minus 5y is 2000, cancel the value of x and got the value of y and got the respective answers. Next question. A certain amount was to be distributed among A, B and C in the ratio 2 is to 3 is to 4 respectively but was erroneously distributed in the ratio 7 is to 2 is to 5. As a result of this, B got rupees 40 less. What is the amount? So how do you solve this? Anybody is able to find the answer for this? See what is given? A certain amount, okay, uh, was distributed, has to be distributed among A, B, C in the ratio 2 is to 3 is to 4. So let me assume that the amount each one has to get, right? A, B, C, let that be 2x, 3x and 4x. But accidentally what have they done? They have distributed it in the ratio 7 is to 2 is to 5, okay? Uh, so give clue, okay, yeah, I am giving the clue. So what has happened? It is dif uh, distributed in a different ratio. So the clue here that you have to remember is that in both the cases, the total amount that has been distributed is the same, okay? Now, 
see it, it has to be actually uh, 2 is to 3 is to 4 or 2x is to 2x, 3x and 4x but now they have distributed in the ratio 7 is to 2 is to 5. So it is now 7y, 2y and 5y. Okay. It, they were supposed to get these these amounts but they have got this these amounts now. Now what you have to remember here is that in both the cases what is the total amount? The total amount is nothing but 2x plus 3x plus 4x correct that is 9x. Here what is the total amount? It is nothing but 7y plus uh, 2y plus 5y okay that is equal to uh, 7 plus 2 that is 9 plus 5 14 y now what you have to remember is that in both the cases the am total amount is the same this 9x is equal to 14 y so if you know this solving the question becomes very easy now they have given us one more one more information what have they told as a result of this b gets rupees 40 less so what does that mean see earlier b got 3x rupees now b has got 2y rupees so what does that mean 3 x minus 2y that is equal to 40 he has got 40 rupees less so now try to represent this x in terms of y uh, basically bring everything in terms of one variable and find the answer okay so i am just going to try to represent this x in terms of y now here you know 9x is equal to 14y or i can say 3x that is equal to 14 by 3 y correct why am i saying 3x because i need 3x here correct here i have to substitute in terms of y so i just took 9x is 14 y means 3x is 14 by 3 y so what can i say 14 by 3 y minus 2 y that is equal to 40 solve for this so what do you get you get 14 y minus i am taking the lcm correct 14 y minus 6 y that is 8 y is equal to this 3 will go here that is 120 Correct? See, I took 3 as the LCM. So, 14 minus 3 into 2, 6. So, this 3 will become common here in the denominator. So, you will have 14y minus 6y that is equal to 120. Or I can say y is equal to 120 by 8 that is 15. Now, if y is equal to 15, what is the total amount? The total amount is 14y that is equal to 14 into 15 that is equal to 210. So, the correct answer here is option Next question. Winnie got twice as many marks in English as in science. Her total marks in English, science and max is 180. If the ratio of her marks in max and English is 3 is to 2, what is her marks in science? So what is given here? Winnie got twice as many marks uh, in English as in science. So if I am saying that Winnie is getting S marks in science, okay, how much marks will she get in English? In English she will get two times the marks that she gets in science, correct? Because Winnie gets twice as many marks in English as in science. Then her total marks in English, science and max is 180. If the ratio of marks of max is to English is 3 is to 2, that is M is to E, that is equal to 3 is to 2 then what is her marks in science okay so if m is to e is 3 is to 2 what can i say i can i am assuming that her marks in max let that be 3x and her marks in english let that be 2x okay now what have they given see they have given that e is equal to 2x so in if in, if i am saying that in english she is getting 2x marks how much would she have got in science in science she should have got half of it correct see e is equal to 2x or i can say the marks that she gets in science is half of what she gets in english so if in english she gets 2x in science she will get only x marks now we know the sum of the marks of the three subjects is 180 or i can say 3x plus 2x plus x is equal to 180 or 6x is 180 or x is equal to 30. Now what was the question? What is her marks in science? She gets S, x marks in science. So the answer that we are looking for is option A that is 30. She gets 30 marks in science. A very easy question. You just have to uh, substitute the values accordingly and get the answer. Next question. The ratio of number of boys to girls in a school was 4 is to 3 with the total number of students as 1, 5, 5, 4. If the ratio of the girls to boys changed to 6 is to 7 when 30 more girls joined the school and a few boys left, how many boys left the school? See a lot of these questions taken for today's session have taken it from previous exam papers directly. So now you get an idea right what kind of questions you can expect in the examination. Actually the questions will not be so tough if you know the correct uh, uh, way to approach it right. Solving the questions is actually very easy from this topic. 
so what is given here the ratio of the number of boys to girls in a school is 4 is to 3 so uh, let us assume that there are 4 x boys in the school and 3 x girls in the school now what are they saying the total number of students in the school is 1 5 5 4 so what is it it is nothing but 4 x plus 3 x right that is equal to 1 5 5 4 or 7 x is equal to 1 5 5 4 correct or x is equal to uh, 1 5 5 4 by 7 that is 2 2 2 now with this what can you say how many boys are there in the school the number of boys in the school is nothing but four times this that is 888 4 into 222 number of girls in the school is 3 into 222 that is 666 so these many boys and girls are there in the school now what have they said if the ratio of the boys to the girls change to 6 is to 7 when 30 more girls join the school and a few boys left so what has happened the ratio between girls to boys right it has changed to 6 is to 7 when had how has it changed see the 666 girls were there earlier now 30 more girls have joined right now how what happened to the boys some x boys x boys have left the school right earlier there were 888 boys x boys have left the school so when this has happened the ratio between the girls to the boys has become 6 is to 7 you have to find out how many boys left the school or you have to find out the value of x okay again a fairly easy one so what is you have uh, 696 divided by 888 minus x is equal to 6 by 7 see this is an even uh, now look at the 696 okay this is an even number and uh, if you see the sum of the digits the sum of the digits will be definitely be divisible by 3 so an even number and divisible by 3 means this number definitely has to be divisible by 6 so that's how you can um, i mean uh, simplify here okay faster so this definitely has to be divisible by 6 how many times 1 uh, again you have 1 then 36 6 okay so you have 116 into 7 is equal to 888 minus x or you can say that is 116 into 7 is 812 correct so i can say 888 minus x is equal to 812 or x is equal to 888 minus 812 or that is equal to 76 so how many boys left the school b that is 76 boys left the school next question james present age is two seventh of his father's present age uh, James brother is three years older to James the respective ratio between the present ages of James father and James brother is 14 is to 5 right because they have given ratio uh, and what is the present age of James it should be 14 is to 5 so what is given here see again you just have to form the equations once you form the equations getting the answer is very easy see James present age let us take that as J what have they given James present age is equal to 2 by 7th of his father's present age so I am assuming his father's present age is F uh, James present age is J or I can say J is equal to 2 by 7 of F now what is given James brother is 3 years older to James so what is James brother's age now brother's age is nothing but J plus 3 because he is 3 years elder to James now what have they given respective ratio between the present age of James father and brother is 14 is to 5 or ratio of ages between father and brother is equal to 14 by 5 so father's age is F means what is brother's age brother's age is nothing but J plus 3 correct now what is J in terms of F it is nothing but 2 by 7 F plus 3 see this is equal to here J you know in terms of the father's age is nothing but 2 by 7 F right plus 3 so I am just writing it like this now uh, so this is what you have and this is equal to 14 by 5 so solve for this and get the value of f and in turn get the value of j okay so if you solve this what will you get you will get 14 into 2 by 7 f plus 14 into 3 that is equal to 5 f correct so here you have 2 so you have 4 f is equal to I mean 4f uh, plus 4f uh, plus 42 is equal to 5f or f is equal to 42. So if f is 42, what is j? 2 by 7 into 42, that is 12. 
12 years, correct. So the correct answer for this question is option A, 12 years. See, we know James' current age is 2 by 7th of his father's age. We wrote that. Then it is given that brother's age is 3 years. Brother is 3 years elder to James. Uh, so I wrote brother in terms of James', James age. That is, uh, brother is equal to J plus 3. Then here, uh, you know, uh, the ratio between father and brother is 14 is to 5. Put in the values, found F and then in turn found J. Okay. So the next question, next we are moving on to allegations okay allegations and mixtures so with this we are coming to an end of the questions that i have chosen for ratios and proportions so before i move on to allegations and mixtures now let us just uh, discuss the basics of this topic okay allegations and mixtures and then we will go on solving uh, questions from this topic so now we we'll look at allegations and mixtures okay so um first uh, in this topic what you need to know what is a mixture so can any of you tell me what is a mixture? So uh, a mixture is nothing but um, that is when you are combining commodities, right, of different types or different quantities, what you get is called as a mixture. Let's say I am mixing two, type, two varieties of rice, okay, I am mixing rice of variety 1 and rice of variety 2, right, when I mix these two I get a resultant, right, that is called as a mixture or similarly I can say that I am mixing some water and alcohol. Okay, when I mix water and alcohol, again I get a mixture of water and alcohol. Okay, so that is basically a mixture. Basically, you are adding uh, or uh, combining two or more uh, commodities of different types, of different quantities, etc. So, that is the basic definition of mixture. Now, what is this allegation rule? Okay, this allegation rule helps us to find out the ratio in which you have to mix two commodities, okay, to obtain a mixture so that is the use of this allegation rule see in many questions uh, questions will be like this see you have uh, a rice right one variety of rice which costs you uh, 50 rupees per kg another variety of rice costs you uh, 30 rupees per kg so now you have to mix these two rice to form uh, to get a uh, rice which will cost uh, 45 rupees per kg in what ratio should you mix these Quant these rices right in such questions wherein you have to mix uh, some different commodities in a particular ratio to get a resultant mixture for such questions this allegation rule if you know solving the question becomes very very easy okay so first we said what is a mixture okay and then now we just said what is this allegation rule how is how does it help us okay now uh, let us uh, see how to use this allegation rule in questions based on mixtures okay so let me just tell you what the allegation rule states okay allegation see this allegation rule no generally you can represent it in terms of a diagram if you know the diagram then it is very easy to remember and solve questions once you know the diagram correctly okay so as i said allegation rule helps us to find out the ratio in which two commodities have to be mixed to obtain a mixture right and this may be based on the price of the commodities the strength of the two commodities to form the mixture etc right that depends on the question either they would give you the price of the commodities like you have two different commodities of two different prices when you mix them you have to get a commodity of a particular price in what ratio should you do or sometimes they give you the strength okay like let's say you are mixing 30 percentage alcohol plus for, with 40 percentage alcohol and the resultant mixture should have 35 percentage alcohol in what ratio should you do so all that depends on the question okay let me draw the di write the diagram first so that it's easier for you to understand see in general as i said if you are mixing two commodities okay of different prices uh, one is uh, two different prices you are mixing them to get a resultant mixture of with some particular cost i can say that these two quantities have to be mixed in the ratio see i'm taking this as cm but this is the case it is nothing but cm minus cc and here it is nothing but cd minus cm okay so this is the diagram see i am taking two quantities okay now cd and cc don't you need to remember these names and all i have two different quantities cd and cc i have to mix them to get a quantity worth cm so how do i mix them in what ratio should i mix them see it is nothing but difference between these two cd minus cc cc minus c that is what i get here so since uh, generally this mean price will be greater than one of the prices so i do cm minus cc this will be greater than this one so i do cm minus cc this will be greater than this one so i do cd minus 
cm now to if you remember this diagram no solving the question becomes very easy now if you are not able to remember these names no cost of dearer cost of cheaper that's actually not necessary if you know the logic solving it becomes easy so let me just explain this to you with the help of an example then it will be you will understand it better now if the question is in what ratio should i mix let us say sugar okay sugar costing 25 rupees per kg and sugar costing uh, 23 rupees per kg okay or 20 rupees per kg okay to get a mixture which costs 23 rupees per kg so what is the question see i have two types of sugar type 1 and type 2 so the type 1 of sugar is costing 25 rupees per kg type 2 of sugar is costing 20 rupees per kg when i mix these two i am getting a sugar which is costing 23 rupees per kg in what ratio should i mix these two quantities so in such cases just draw this diagram you will get the answer in one step so what are we doing see one quantity is costing 25 another quantity is costing 20 so when i mix these two the answer that i get should be should cost only 23 when i mix these two the result that the resultant mixture that i get should cost 23 rupees per kg so in what ratio should i mix them see do 23 minus 20 that is the bigger number minus the smaller number so 23 minus 20 is 3 here the bigger number is 25 correct so 25 minus 23 is 2 so this type 1 and type 2 i have to mix them in the ratio 3 is to 2 to get the answer i mean to get uh, worth 23 kg 23 rupees per kg okay i hope it is clear so that is what uh, in in books and in videos and all we would have given it in terms of these dearer cheaper and all that if if you are not able to recollect that just remember it this way see the same thing you also at times represent it in terms of a formula right quantity of the cheaper right sometimes it is represented like this quantity of the cheaper divided by the quantity of the dearer that is equal to cost of the dearer minus cost of the mixture divided by the cost of the mixture minus cost of the dearer so this cm minus cc right this is the quantity sometimes it is represented in formulas like this you need to remember that if you remember this figure itself solving all the questions will be done okay if you look at our video lessons also we would have mentioned this uh, equation also but i suggest remember this diagram i hope this diagram is clear okay so that is the first thing that you need to know when it comes to uh, mixtures that is allegation how to use the allegation rule now next one you will lot of times you have questions on removal and replacement okay that is another uh, question that commonly comes from this section removal and replacement so what are these questions on removal and replacement see for example if i am saying that there is a vessel okay now in this vessel there are a liters of milk let's say milk is there if there is a liters of milk and from this i am taking out b liters of milk i take out b liters of milk and then what i do i am adding b liters of water okay basically i am removing b liters of milk and i am replacing b liters of water now i keep doing this first there was a liters of milk i removed b liters of milk and i added b liters of water instead then again what i do i remove b liters of the mixture now it has become milk water mixture correct i remove b liters of the mixture again add in b liters of water so if i keep doing this removal and replacement for let's say n number of times then i can say that the amount of milk that is there or the amount of the uh, liquid that was there originally after n operations is nothing but a into 1 minus b by a whole to the power n this is one formula if you remember solving such question becomes very easy now let me just explain this formula to you once again if a vessel has a liters of a liquid okay a liters of a liquid was present originally in the vessel and from this you are withdrawing or removing b liters and you are replacing it with another liquid okay of b liters and if this is being done n times then the quantity of the original liquid that will be left in the container after this after this n times is nothing but a into 1 minus b by a whole to the power n so if you remember this formula also solving a lot of questions from this section becomes very easy okay so with this we will start solving the questions again i'll explain uh, it to you if required in the question okay any any of these concept is required i'll explain it again and solve the question to you so that it's clear now first question so the first question from uh, this topic allegations and mixtures is on removal and replacement so what is given here eight liters are drawn from a flask containing milk and then filled with water the operation is performed three more times 
the ratio of the quantity of milk left and the total solution is 81 divided by 625. How much milk uh, did the flask, how much milk the flask initially holds? So what is given here? See, we know that if I am assuming that the flask initially holds A liters of milk, then what has happened? See, how much milk will be there remaining? A into 1 minus B by A whole to the power N. Correct, that much milk will be remaining assuming that A was the initial amount of milk that was there in the vessel and I am removing B liters every time and replacing that with water. Okay, and I am doing it for N times. Now, uh, here what is this? Uh, see, we don't know what is the value of A. And what are they saying? The ratio of the quantity of milk left and the total solution is, 600 and, uh, is 81 by 625. So, what is this answer that you get here? This will be the value of milk that will be there finally, correct? So the final value of milk is what you get here. Or the final amount of milk that is present in the mixture, correct? So now what is this 81 by 625? See this 81 by 625 is nothing but the final amount of milk present, correct? Final milk present divided by the total solution, okay? total solution. Now, how do you solve this? See, uh, suddenly you feel that there is not enough information to solve the question, but yes, there is enough information. See, you know, what is this A? This A was, initially there was, a, the total container was filled with milk, correct? Initially the flask was fully containing milk. So how much milk was there? A amount of milk was there. So what is this A actually? This A represents the total solution, correct? Or the total value of milk that was there in the container, okay? Now this uh, final milk present is F, okay? Or I can say that 1 minus B by A whole to the power N is equal to final value of milk present divided by A. Isn't that so? That is equal to, again this 625, sorry, that is equal to 81 by 625. I can say this or here what is B? See, I am removing how much? 8 liters, I am removing every time. 8 by, uh, initially what was there? I don't know. So, I am just taking it as A again here. Hold to the power N. Now, how many, time am, how many times am I doing this removal and replacement? That is the next thing that you have to look. See, it is given that first you are drawing 8 liters of uh, uh, milk from the flask and replacing it with water and then it is said that this operation is done three more times. So what does that mean? Totally how many times have we done this operation? We have done this operation four times. The first time we did, then after that we did it for three more times. So totally n is equal to four. So this is equal to 81 by 625. So from this find out the value of a that will be the uh, initial amount of milk that the flask holds. So uh, what do you do? See find out um, you just have to find out the root two times for this 81 by 625, right? So if you know 1 minus 8 by a whole to the power 4 is 81 by 625, you can say 1 minus 8 by a, the whole squared is what? It is nothing but 9 by 25. Or I can say 1 minus 8 by a, that is equal to, again, find out the root once again of 9 by 25, that will be 3 by 5. So from this, if you solve, you get 8 by a is equal to 2 by 5, okay? So... This thing if you solve you get 8 by A that is equal to 2 by 5 or A is equal to 8 into 5 by 2 that is 20 liters. So initially the flask holds 20 liters. Next question. A bucket contains a mixture of two liquids A and B in the proportion of 7 is to 5. If 9 liters of the mixture is replaced by 9 liters of liquid B, the ratio of the two liquids becomes 7 is to 9. How much of liquid B was there in the bucket initially? So what is given here? So you have a bucket. Uh, it contains two mixtures A and B in the ratio 7 is to 5. Or I am just assuming that 7x is A, 5x is B. Now 9 liters of this mixture is replaced by 9 liters of liquid B. So if I remove... 9 liters okay, of the liquid, this liquid if I am removing, how much uh, of liquid A will go and how much of liquid B will go? See here you have to use the concept of ratios. See totally 7 is to 5 is the ratio of the liquids A and B. So if I am removing 9 liters, I can say that 7 out of 12 into 9 will be mixture A and will be liquid A and 5 by 12 out of 9 
will be liquid B. I hope you know how I wrote this. See, totally, if there are 12 liters, this, see, A and B are in the ratio 7 is to 5. So, totally, if there are 12 liters, out of this 12 liters, 7 liters will be A and 5 liters will be B. Or 7 out of 12 is A and 5 out of 12 is B. Here, how many liters we have? We have 9 liters. So, in this total 9 liters, 7 by 12 of 9 will be A and uh, 5 by 12 of 9 will be B. Right? So, when you are removing 9 liters, what is happening? How much of liquid A will be there if you remove this 9 liters? A will become 7x minus 7 by 12 of 9. Correct? The 7 by 12 of 9 is what? It is nothing but 21 by 4. So, how much A will be left in the container? It will be 7x minus 21 by 4. How much B will be there? It is nothing but again 5x minus 5 threes are 15 by 4. But now what is happening? After they remove, correct, what are they doing? They are adding 9 liters of liquid B. So how much liquid B will be there in the container now? Plus 9, correct? So if you see earlier A and B were in the ratio 7 is to 5. Out of this we removed 9 liters. That means 7x minus 21 by 4 liters of A is there and 5x minus 15 by 4 liters of B is there. Now to this mixture we are adding again 9 liters of liquid B. And now what is happening? The ratio between the liquids A and B in the container is becoming how much? This is equal to 7 by 9. So now what have what should you find out? Uh, you have to find out the value of x and then see what is the value of 5x. Correct? 5x will give you how much uh, uh, b was there initially. So if you solve this what will you get? So you will get 28x minus 21 that is equal to Mm. Here you will have 20x minus 15 plus 36. So you will have 20x minus uh, 20x plus 21. Correct? So you will have um, 28x minus 21 divided because 4 will get cancelled. 20x plus 21 that is equal to 7 by 9. So if you solve for this 7 gets cancelled this will become 4. 3. So, 4x minus 3 into 9 is equal to 20x plus 21 or you get 16x is equal to 48 or x is equal to 3. So, if x is equal to 3, 5x that is equal to 15 liters. So, that is what you are looking for. How much B was there initially? Initially, 5x B was there that is 15 liters or option A. Okay. Let us move on to the next question. So, this question you have to use the concept of allegation. Okay. So, by using concept of allegation, solving such questions become very easy. Now, look at this question. Vessel A and B contains uh, mixtures of milk and water in the ratio 4 is to 5 and 5 is to 1 respectively. In what ratio should the quantities of the mixture be taken from A and B to form a mixture in which milk is to water is in the ratio 5 is to 4? So, what is given here? See, you have a vessel A in which milk is to water, right, is in the ratio 4 is to 5. Or I can say that, uh, let us say if totally there are 9 liters, okay, in the vessel A, out of this 9 liters, 4 by 9 liters is milk and 5 by 9 liters is water, okay. I am just, I'm just uh, writing it in terms of fractions. So, if there are totally 9 liters, that is 4 plus 5, 9 liters, out of this 9 liters, 4 out of 9 is milk and 5 out of 9 is water. Correct? So, if there are totally 9 liters, uh, what will happen? F uh, 4 liters will be milk and 5 liters will be water. Correct? Okay. Now, similarly, if you are taking the container B, if uh, here the milk and water are in the ratio 5 is to 1. Or what can I say? See, if I, uh, I can say that 5 by 6 of the container is milk and 1 by 6 of the container is water. Or if there are totally 6 liters, out of the 6 liters, 5 liters is milk and 1 liter is water. Correct? I have just written it in terms of ratios like this. Okay? So, 4 by 9th of this container is milk and 5 by 9th of the container is water. 5 by 6th of this container is milk and 1 by 6th of this container is water. Okay? So, if you know this, now what are they saying? In what ratio should the mixtures be taken from A is to B to form a mixture in which milk is to water is in the ratio 5 is to 4? So, in the mixture, milk is to water is to be in the ratio 5 is to 4. So, what does that mean? See, out of 5 by 9th of the mixture has to be milk and 4 by 9th of the mixture has to be water. 
correct so what can you understand now see you have a vessel a where you have 4 by 9th milk you have a vessel b where 5 by 6th is milk when i combine these two i should get a mixture where 5 by 9th of the vessel is milk use the principle of allegation 4 by 9 and you have 5 by 6 when you are mixing this you should get 5 by 9 so in what ratio should you mix them this is nothing but 5 by 6 minus 5 by 9 because 5 by 6 is bigger than 5 by 9, correct? So 5 by 6 minus 5 by 9 and this is nothing but 5 by 9 minus 4 by 9. That is equal to, this is 1 by 9, this is equal to 5 by 18. So this is nothing but 5 by 2, this will be 1, okay? So 5 by 2 is to 1, that is nothing but 5 is to 2, okay? So you have to mix. Uh, these two mix, uh, these two uh, uh, mixtures of milk and water in A and B in the ratio 5 is to 2 to get the required mixture. See, you can either do it in terms of milk or in terms of water. Still, you will get the same answer. So, let us say I am saying that, okay, I am not going to find the values in terms of milk. I can do it in terms of water. I will still get the same answer. 1 by 6, I mix, I should get 4 by 9. Again, you try and solve this. Again, you will get here the answer as 5 is to Okay, I hope it is clear. The next question is there on your screen. This is a fairly easy question. Um, so, 5 kg of rice at rupees 6 per kg is mixed with 4 kg of rice to get a mixture costing 7 rupees per kg. Uh, find the uh, cost of the price of the costlier rice. See, what are we doing? 5 kg of a rice at 6 per kg. So, what is the total cost of the first type of rice? The total cost is nothing but 5 into 6. That is 30 rupees, correct? You have... 6 rupees per kg and you have 5 kgs. So, 5 into 6 or 30 rupees. Now, second variety of rice, you are mixing 4 kgs of rice. I don't know the cost. Okay. So, let that be x. So, this will be the total cost of the second variety of rice. So, when I am doing this, what am I getting? I am getting a mixture which is costing 7 rupees per kg. So, in the mixture, what is the total price of the mixture? See, totally how many kgs do I have? I have 5 kgs of rice 1 and 4 kgs of rice 2. So, totally I have 9 kgs of the mixture and cost per 1 kg of the mixture is 7 rupees. So, this is equal to 63, correct? So, what is the total cost? It is nothing but 5 into 6 plus 4 into x that is equal to 63. Find out the value of x. Very easy question, no? Or I can say 4x is equal to 33 or x is equal to uh, 33 divided by 4 that is 8.25. So, the cost of the second variety of rice will be 8.25 rupees per kg. Okay, see it is given there is for one variety of rice. I have 5 kgs of that costing 6 rupees per kg. So, total cost of that variety is 30 rupees. Now, I have another variety of rice where I have 4 kg of that but I don't know the price of that. Okay, when I am mixing these two, I am getting a mixture which is costing 7 rupees per kg. So, total cost of the mixture, I have totally 9 kgs of the mixture, correct? 5 plus 4, 9. So, 9 sevens are 63. Equate the costs and get the cost of the second variety. That is 8.25 rupees per kg, 33 by 4. Clear? So, let us look at the next question. A mixture of a certain quantity of milk with 16 liters of water is worth 90 paise per liter. If pure milk be worth rupees 1.08 per liter, how much is there in the mixture? So again, you have to use the concept of allegations here. Let's look at this question now. So what is given here? There is a mixture of certain quantity of milk uh, with 16 liters of water. Okay. Okay. There is some uh, mixture that is worth 90 paise per liter. Now, pure milk is worth 1.08 uh, rupees per liter and I am adding some water to it and then I am getting a resultant which is worth 90 paise per liter. Okay, now uh, what are they asking you? If pure milk is rupees 1.08 per liter, how much is there in the mixture? So basically they are asking you how much pure milk is there in the mixture. Now uh, let me just rephrase it to you once again. See what they have given is that actual pure milk is costing 1.08 rupees per liter. Now what I am doing is I have a mixture okay, uh, which has uh, 16 liters of water in it and the worth of the mixture is only 90 paise per liter. Now I have to find out how much milk is there in this mixture. 
so how do i do this see actually how have we got this mixture when i am adding pure milk to water right that is pure milk cost was 1.08 rupees when i add water to that i am getting a mixture which is worth 90 paise correct so what can i say if i uh, use a uh, rule of allegation what can i say see i have milk which is costing 1.08 rupees per liter i am adding water to it now what is the cost of water cost of water is 0 rupees when i do this i am getting uh, a milk or a mixture of milk worth 90 paise per liter okay now let us take everything in terms of paise so this 1.08 rupees let us take it as 108 paise okay everything in terms of paise so that it's easier for us to calculate so when i'm mixing these two i am getting 90 uh, i am getting a mixture worth 90 paise now in this mixture they are saying that i have 16 liters of water now i have to say how much milk is there very easy so basically find out in what ratio should i mix these two that is in what ratio should i mix pure milk and water to get a mixture worth 90 paise and if i know that in that mixture uh, 16 liters is water remaining how much is milk find that out so what is here 90 minus p so 90 minus 0 okay this p don't write here because it might be confusing to for your understanding i wrote it is paise you just write 108 0 90 correct so you have so you have 90 minus 0, 108 minus 90, that is 108 minus 90, which is equal to uh, 18, correct? This is 90. So 90 is to 18. So what can I say? I can say that milk and water have to be mixed in the ratio 90 is to 18, right? That is equal to 5 is to 1 to get the resultant mixture. So in the resultant mixture, they are saying that there is 16 liter of water. So how much milk is there? See, milk and uh, water are in the ratio 5 is to 1. So, 5 out of 6 will be milk, correct? Here, 1 by 6 of x is equal to 16. So, what is x? x is equal to 16 into 6. So, how much milk is there? 5 by 6 of x, that is equal to 5 by 6 into 16 into 6. That is equal to uh, 16 into 5, that is 80 liters. So, 80 liters of milk will be there in the mixture okay hope it is clear see in the questions wherein you are using allegation and you are adding water generally remember to take the cost of water as zero that will generally not be given we have to take it okay yeah i hope it is clear let's look at the next question a jar contains a mixture of two liquids a and b in the ratio 4 is to 1 when 10 liters of the mixture is taken out and 10 liters of liquid b is poured into the jar the ratio becomes 2 is to 3 how many liters of liquid a was contained in the jar see this was the same type of question that we did previously so use the same method right what is given here see a is to b is given in the ratio 4 is to 1 right so if i am saying that i have 10 liters okay i am taking out 10 liters means out of this 10 liters 4 by 5 into 10 right that is a 8 liters of a i am taking out so how many liters of b will i take out it is nothing but 1 by 5 of 10 that is 2 liters so 2 liters of b i will take out so now how much a is there in the mixture and how much b is there in the mixture 4x minus 8 a will be there in the mixture if this is 4x and this is x right 4x minus 8 a will be there in the mixture and here you will have x minus 2 a x minus 2 b in the mixture now what are they doing they are adding 10 liters of b into the mixture so what will be the ratio it will be 4x minus 8 divided by x minus 2 plus 10 that is x plus 8 this is given as 2 is to 3 find out the value of x and see how much a was there initially means find the value of 4x so solve for this get the value of x what is it that you get you get 12x minus 24 that is equal to 2x plus 16 or um, 10x is equal to 40 or x is equal to 4 correct so then you have 4x that is equal to 4 into 4 that is 16 liters yes the correct answer is option c 16 liters next question 35 kg of a type of sandal powder which costs 614 rupees per kg was uh, mixed with certain amount of another type of sandal powder which costs rupees 695 per kg then the mixture was sold at 767 rupees per kg at 80 and 18 percentage profit was gained what was the amount of type b of sandal wood powder in the 
mixture. See again, this question you will get the answer in one step using the concept of allegation. But one small thing you have to remember here is this sentence. Okay. See what have they given? They are giving that when you are uh, they are given that when you are selling it at 767 rupees per kg, you are making an 18 percentage profit. So before you start doing the allegations, you have allegation rule, you have to find out the actual cost price of the mixture and then apply. Okay, see when I am selling something for 767 rupees, I am getting 18 percentage profit means, I mean what does that mean? See, let the actual cost price of the mixture, if that is X, correct? X into 118 divided by 100, that is equal to 767, correct? Or I can say the actual cost price of the mixture is 767 into 100 divided by 118, right? So this is nothing but 650. So this is the actual cost price of the mixture. Now apply the allegation rule and you will get the answer easily. So what are we doing? See we are uh, mixing something which is 614 rupees per kg and we are another thing costing 695 rupees per kg and we are getting 650 rupees per kg. So in what ratio should we mix them? 695 minus 650 that is 45 is to 650 minus 614 that is 36 so 45 is to 36 or 15 is to 12 or you can write it as 5 is to 4 correct basically you are mixing the two types in the ratio 5 is to 4 to get the mixture so 5 is to 4 means so what is here the time see 5x and 4x right that is the quantity of both the uh, mixtures when both the types that you are taking now the first type of sandal, sandalwood powder you know you have taken 35 kgs so this 5x is nothing but 35 or i can say x is equal to 7 so how much of type 2 will i take 4x right so 4 into 7 that is equal to 28 kg so i will take 28 kg of the type 2 sandalwood powder to make the mixture See what have we done? They are saying that when I am mixing these two type A and type B and I am selling the resultant mixture at 767 rupees per kg, I am making a profit of 18 percentage. So from that I actually find out the cost price of the mixture. Once I get the cost price of the mixture, I just combine these two um, things right using allegation. Uh, there is six, something worth 614 and 695 I am mixing them I am getting something worth 650 and this has to be done in the ratio 5 is to 4 and here I know this is 35 so what is the next one it is 28 very easy uh, again this question was asked in a uh, pre this was a previous year question okay uh, let us look at this question also see these uh, questions on allegations are very easy if you uh, understand the concept correctly solving it is very easy Again, see here it is mixing of milk and water. Okay, Mother, uh, we did a similar type of question earlier as well. So let us look at this one. Pure milk costs rupees 20 per liter. After adding water, the milkman sells the mixture at a rate of 18 rupees per liter, thereby making a profit of 25 percentage. In what ratio does he mix the two? So again, same method as we did for the previous question. See, he is selling it at 18 rupees per liter. Okay, when he is do, selling it at 18 rupees per liter, he is making a profit of 25 percentage. So, how do you take it? See, if the actual cost of the mixture was x rupees, x into 125 by 100 that is equal to 18. Or what is x? x is equal to 18 into 100 divided by 125. So, 18 into 4 by 5 that is nothing but, okay. So, that is the actual cost of the resultant mixture now what is he doing to get this see pure milk is costing 20 rupees per liter now to this he is adding water which is costing 0 rupees per liter now when you are adding these two he is getting a mixture which is worth 14.4 rupees so in what ratio is he mixing 14.4 minus 0 so 14.4 minus 0 here it is 20 minus 14.4 so here you have 14.4 um, is to 5.6 or I can directly take this remove the decimals right you can take it as 144 is to 56 so 144 is to 56 8 will go in both right 18 is to 7 so 18 is to 7 is the ratio in which he is mixing both of them so the correct answer is option a 18 is to 7 
so how did we do it uh, see he is selling he is mixing uh, there is you know uh, pure milk costs 20 rupees per liter to that he is adding water and selling it at 18 rupees per liter and making a profit of 25 percentage so we found out the actual cost price of the mixture so the actual cost price of the mixture was 14.4 rupees and now when he is mixing milk worth 20 rupees and water worth 0 rupees he is getting a resultant of 14.4 rupees in what ratio should he mix he should mix them in the ratio 18 is to 7 okay so i think uh, with that we are coming to an end of the question that has been chosen for today's session so um, let's just skim through what we did so first we uh, looked at ratios and proportions and we also learned properties of ratios like component or dividend to and um, again what is proportion what is fourth proportionality what is mean proportional so uh, after that we did problems based on that then we went into allegations and mixtures so in allegations and mixtures uh, learn the uh, allegation rule right learn the diagram well also learn the formula for removal and replacement uh, these are the important things that you will need to cover from this topic and we have uh, tried out most of the type of questions that come from this topic as well so i hope everything was clear that is from us for now okay so all the very best with your uh, preparation and i'll see you in the next session and this is gayatri signing off till then 